Hello and welcome to another Raggy's Bears, Wines and Spirits review. Third one today. And the only reason I'm doing another one is because I have to. Because if I don't, then um, the beer will probably um, not be so drinkable tomorrow. So, <clears throat> you may have seen another couple of uh, Lincoln Green Brewery reviews in the last two reviews. Well, um, now I've got loud all of a sudden then. Again no notice of the, the bottle I, I couldn't find a bloody marker so that's that's basically a pint and he's given me a, a nice wallet more than a pint so I paid two quid for this uh, from Lincoln Green's brewery um, shop and basically they got three beers that they were doing for two quid each and uh, this is spring green a 4.3 percent lager style ale so it's actually an ale but a lager style ale Now, obviously, it's, it's poured from like you would in a pub. And if you pour a pint out, you've got to drink it within so much time. Well, the pint's gone into here. So, basically, I've got to get it drank today. Wow. I've got to get it drank. I might as well, haven't I? You know. See, when it was poured out, there was a good head on it. But obviously now, uh, understandably, that was poured out a while ago. I do wonder if you could reinvigorate it with uh, half a spoon of sugar and get the carbonation going again, like a secondary fermentation. Uh, but um, I don't really need to do that at the moment, so I need to put this on here and hope it don't break my shelf quickly before it uh, does break my shelf. <clears throat> All right, there we go. So. So you've got all this going on at the moment, this COVID stuff. Wife's put a bloody uh, disaster film on TV, a uh, Left Behind, a Nicolas Cage film, where all of a sudden half the planet just uh, disappear. And, uh, you know, there's, there's a, a little bridge too far from oneself. So, um, golden amber pour. Obviously there's no head, but I've already explained that. I think I'm smelling. I've got a bit of a runny nose. I'm not coming down with a cold or anything worse. <clears throat> not bad so far. Um, I've got a runny nose. I'm not getting the, the aroma. I can smell hops, but whether that's just in the air with so many beers in here, or whether it's coming because it's, I can smell the uh, wine brewing in the background. Gotta say, it's nice and smooth, um, very drinkable. Um, Still, at the moment, I'm struggling to, to get what it is. <clears throat> Blooming temperature would drop as it's the weekend, wouldn't it? Freezing. So I had three beers. Uh, the other two were absolutely excellent. Um, amazing. What a great idea to sell beers in draft, take your own bottles to fill up. So them, you know, they get they're making good money on the barrels, I presume anyway. Um or well, at least getting some money back. And for the and hopefully they're getting it back in cash and not having to uh, put it through the tax. But um who knows. But anyway, yeah. Yeah, a nice beer. Um very different. <laughs> I just have Chinese as well, so I'm going to leave it a bit before I, I say too much. Yeah, I just had a lovely Chinese delivered. The bloke's there with his little plastic gloves, and um, although I did get within two bloody meters, but obviously he wanted he needed paying, so it's it's not easy. As long as you don't breathe on you.
and as you do, sprayed everywhere, um, sprayed my hands with this so, so using the old, keep using the old antibacterial. <clears throat> I don't know if it works, but um, well, my hands smell nice. Yeah, I smell of this so all the time. I do. Yeah, so I'm just getting the uh, um, taste of chicken. I had some salt chicken and uh, uh, a piece of dry rib, um, chips, a couple of onion rings, and uh, what are them? Some beef noodles, and uh, whoa, went down the tree. Belly's full now. I feel like a tent on Tessa. <clears throat> So even though I'm struggling to um, get the flavour, what I can say is it's a really nice tasting beer. It's going down a treat. Um, picking out the flavour at the moment is really difficult. I mean, maybe that's the thing with being a lager style pale ale, that there isn't a lot of um, aroma there. I haven't been defeated yet. Not yet, I haven't. I'm getting a hint of citrus. Very subtle, very subtle hint. Like a note of citrus in there. Let me just see if it's on the website because uh, this is the only thing we're buying it this way is the fact that um, you, you're blind on what you're buying. Spring Green from Lincoln Green Brewery. Don't, don't think it'll say anything but... Oh, right. So actually, it does say something. Let's have a nosy. It's their specials range. In their specials range, you, while I'm here anyway chatting, they've got gin and beer it. There you go. And uh, it's a gin infused beer. 5%. And uh, availability is March and April 2018. So it really should have been out there. St. Clement's 4.3 Citrus Pale. And uh, there's that one. So these are the specials that would normally, I think, be in pubs. Oh, now that does sound nice. Strawberries and cream. So again, they, they, I'm, I'm liking some of these. Aha! Spring green, so that's what it would be if it was on, you know, on in a pub. So, brewed with lager malt and hops with low levels of bitterness. This is an ideal introduction to real ale for the lager drinker. Mm -hmm. And then they've got Joseph Keller there, a chocolate cherry stout. I'm damn sure I've had that before at uh, Robin Hood Beer Festival. Daybrook Bitter, another one. Now I actually live in Sherwood. Woodthorpe is about 100 yards that way, 150. And Daybrook's about 300, 400 yards that way. I live up right on the edge of Sherwood. Um, yeah, Daybrook Bitter. Robin's Red Fest, 6.5% as well. That does sound nice, doesn't it? And another one, Big Ben, and it's a strong mild. And it's great, um, you know, to see some of these beers, 6% strong mild. Don't get many 6% milds. I would love to try some of that. And then they've got, brr, an amber winter warmer. Again, bloody hell, 5% as well. 
And that's it on the range. I mean, that's the special range. So, yeah, some really nice beers there. The Strong Mild really sounds interesting. I have to keep my eye out for this for the shop um, because Hucknall's not far away from me. Um, the same as like uh, Castle Rock isn't far that way. Hucknall's not far that way, and then um, Titanic's Brewer is is just slightly different way, but same in di same distance again. So, not Titanic. Um, Blue Monkey. Um, yeah, Titanic. I wish Titanic Brewery was closer. There's a couple of their ales I need to review, but can't get anywhere near. And their pubs aren't anywhere near either, sadly. So, brewed with lager malt. I mean, I can taste malt, but uh, I'm not getting any discernible flavours. But I suppose if you're going to bring out a beer that um, is close to what a lager is, and as you know with most lagers, there's not a lot of flavour in lagers, they are what they are, uh, like, like malt and that, and uh, to bring out a beer that bridges that gap, because there's a hell of a lot of lager drinkers in this country, there's a hell of a lot of people, <clears throat> I keep coughing, I'll be stuck getting worried, there's a hell of a lot of lager drinkers who don't want to put their feet in the um, in the craft beer world, in the beer world. I mean, I started off for most of my life as a lager drinker. <coughs> I frog in my bloody throat. And then I moved from lagers to, I always liked the odd spirit. I like Bailey's and I like Malibu. And then I went to real ales because one of my friends, Graham, um, got proper into real ales, uh, then started on wines and failed miserably, pissed out my head, uh, <laughs> sick, yeah, yeah there's, a, there's, a, there's a restaurant in uh, Nuttall, which isn't too far away from here, where I was at the dinner table, as you are, and um, we're all having dinner, I had one glass of wine, I'd had some beer before, mind you, and I start off with a glass of wine, I'm loud, and uh, you know, king of the party sort of thing, really loud, really taking the mic, as you do, getting the old banter going, and then I must have been on the third glass, second or third glass, I don't know, and uh, drinking it the next minute, oh my god, it's hit me, I'm, I'm like, oh shit, I'm in trouble, if I go quiet, and everyone's like, what are you going quiet for? I says, I'm, I'm bad, I need to just, you know, leave me be, but then, uh, I had to go to the toilet, didn't I? Went to the toilet, boffed up, sat on the toilet, boffed into the urinal, little urinal, and uh, all that raw ice and all that coming out. Oof. And uh, I think they've got my name in there and a photo of me, so just to make sure that he's banned, you know. Oof. Yeah, yeah. And anybody, anybody from that restaurant's watching that, I do apologise. Yeah, it was your wine, you, you killed me. And then from there, uh, from white wines, well, I stood back a bit actually, I went back onto rosé wines. Rosé wines, white wines, red wines. And uh, I mean, nowadays I can drink virtually anything. And uh, I can, for the most part, pick out the right tastes. I'm not perfect by no means, but I know what tastes good. And that's what matters really, what, it's what tastes good. And I know what tastes nasty as well. And I've brewed a few myself, so I know where that's going. So I get the vibes of a lager in this, but you definitely get the beer taste. So for me with this, if you're a lager drinker, this is definitely an interesting beer to try. Um, I mean, I, I, there's quite a few beers I've come across whilst I've been reviewing that are good beers to step, step into the world of beers. Um, and <coughs> Oh dear, hay fever. Um, this is definitely one of those beers to try and, um, you know, introduce yourself. Because, like anything, you don't want to be st stuck 
You want flavour. This there are sort of quite a few craft lagers out there these days. But there's a lot. Oh my god, that was nearly a pint and a half. Good lad. Well done, Lincoln Green. I mean I did say only only do it to the level, but hey fair play. I suppose if it's they're only they're only doing it for two days, so I, I presume there's a reason why they're only doing it for two days of to them three varieties, and I presume that's because once they've cracked it open, they've only got a limited amount of time. I mean, I know when I do, <coughs> I've got barrels in the background. Here. If I brew beer into a barrel, which I don't tend to do, to be honest. Uh, if I put beer in the barrel and do from the barrel, you've got uh, not a long window before that beer goes off. Um, same if you get a, you know, like you bought beer in a bag, uh, you've only got a, a window of a couple of days, two or three days before that. You've got to be drinking that beer in that time. I mean, nine pints in two days is very easy to do. Very, very easy to do. Um, <clears throat> um, I've got a friend, I think, this weekend, he, he drank nine pints in a day. And then, and then had some coconut rum on top. Yeah, no wonder he's suffering now. Um, so, going to be another long review. I do apologise for these long reviews. I will get it back down to reasonable lengths. But I suppose... Watching me instead of the news, the news and getting depressed, it's a good thing. You might get depressed watching me, thinking, look at that twat or that beer. Um, <laughs> it's good to see this white wine bubbling away in the background. And the rosé wine looks like it's doing something. I don't know what, but it's doing something. I'm definitely going to have to get another a new uh, fermentation bucket. I think that bucket's uh, seen its end of its days it's the lid's broke and you can't just go and buy a lid you have to buy the bucket which is a bit of a shame really uh, unless I look on eBay and see if someone's selling a lid yeah. but they're not that dear to buy anyway or I'll go out and buy another bucket and use three vas vessels at the same time although there's not much more I need to brew this year I'm at that stage now where I've, I'm, I'm all brewed out I mean 90 pints of wine there, no, 90 bottles of wine, 120 pints of wine there. Add to these another 60 bottles there, and that's my wine quota done. Bar a nice red. I do fancy a nice red that I'm going to have to get from uh, one of my um, local, probably either from Creative Wine Making or Love Brewing. Get a nice red. Something I've not had before, so I can review it. <clears throat> Anyway, back to this lager. Or should we say pale ale? Yeah. Obviously now I've had nearly a pint and a half of it, it's got a lovely nice twang to it. Obviously, it's not trying to, there's, there's a malty taste there with a nice twang. And it's not trying to overindulge you into the world of beer. It's giving you that a little tread into beery waters and you don't mind treading in beer waters eh? could you be sitting there all day just drinking the water <sighs> strength 4.3 percent nice strength going down a treat um, so if you ever get to see this in a pub because it's not something they bottle and personally uh, if anybody from Lincoln Green watches this video, these beers you've got on draft, um, obviously this is going to last for a bit longer than what we all expect it to. And like you've done with your butter much, where you've just done a, a quick blank label, yeah, so there you go. You haven't really got to do much more than that. Slap a little label on, get it bottled and uh, get it in bottle, sell it. Because I'm telling you now, this and the other two that I've already reviewed today are absolute pearlers and they deserve to be in bottles or in these beer in a bag things. Um, I would certainly think about going that route. 
um, all your seasonal beers can bring you more revenue. And for people like me, it gives me a chance to try something I haven't tried before, which is which is a you know a, definitely a thing I want to do. I mean, I hopefully I, if I if next time I go to Lincoln Green because there's some dear, there's some expensive beers that I wanted to get, but I didn't have the pennies today. What we're getting all that lot, um, but I definitely want to. If there's any more seasonal beers there again, it's uh, very much the thing to get. You know, any beers that are there and. Uh, you know, I mean, the beers that I've tried today, two of them aren't even on the website, so they, that shows you something. Some good beers. That was lovely. So, golden amber pour. Uh, on the nose, I struggled because of this um, sniffly nose. On the taste, there's malt. There's a little bit of citrus in the background. There's a nice twang to it. Very good beer to the to get you from lager to beer. Uh, I totally agree with what the the what they've tried to do from a lot at that point and uh, I wholeheartedly agree with it. Four point three, good strength from the beer and damn nice tasting. I mean I had a pint and a half nearly so that was, that was really good. Out of five then. Ooh, four point four out of five again a top quality beer. Deserves to be in a bottle. Gotta tell you. Like the other two I've reviewed from Lincoln Green Brewery today. They deserve to be in bottles, and uh, if you can bottle them cheap, I don't know how much expensive bottling is, but if you can bottle them cheap or sell it on draft from your brewery like they are doing, it's got to be the way to be done. It increases sales because, like most beer fans, I want one of everything. Right, I better stop talking because this video is way long again. Thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for subscribing, and see you soon. And like always, please stay safe. Cheers.